Hey, what's up, guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and in my ever-elusive quest to find some sort of delay effector functionality in After Effects, I've gotten kind of close as long as you don't mind your stuff being slightly glitchy. I think it's kind of cool, but it's not exactly the pure delay effector I'm looking for. Please, AE dev team, if you guys can just make MoGraph for After Effects, that'd be amazing. Just rip off all of Cinema's, you know, IP and just make that. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I've come up with a couple of workarounds and uh, you can see one right here. It's kind of a glitchy thing. It's not going to be 100% perfect, but for having just two keyframes of animation, this thing is pretty darn close. So at first I tried a couple of different things. I tried like a little simple echo and that's what it looks like. Not exactly what I was looking for. I played around. I got this. I kind of like the little like uh, photocopy kind of look if you, if we pause it in here, how it kind of looks. Kind of a neat little effect on its own, built in the same kind of way. I tried another one where I made a gradient out of the shape itself and used it as its own time displacement. Don't mind this, this is some kind of bug. If you purge, that goes away, I don't know why, but it's cool, it's interesting, but definitely not what I was looking for. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you guys how to make this one. And then, play around with it because there's some cool stuff you can do with it and you might be able to use this in a project somewhere. So this is obviously based on a time displacement with a radial mat. That mat looks like this. It's done with a little polar coordinates and a radial blur. Um, the more you crank this up, you can see kind of how like bumpy it gets. That'll give you that photocopy look of that other one that I was showing before. Since these are small dots though, we don't need to go very far, but it's nice to have it blend out just a little bit. If you don't have it on at all, It'll do more like this. You can see those kind of pieces, and that's kind of cool too. Having that blur on there kind of just smooths out like these little jumps and stuff. Either way, I think it's pretty cool looking. So it's a simple setup. The mat itself is based off of a square. You could do this with a radial gradient, but it's going to move differently in time. I wanted the delay to go around the circle rather than into and out of the circle. So we're going to jump back to a little, uh, little blast from the past. We're going to go do a little inception up here. Pull in another tutorial. This is in the uh, old radial delay tutorial. I think it's number two. And this is what we're using to figure out uh, how big to make that mat. So we need a square that is basically the hypotenuse of the composition. And when you take 1920 square it and then add 1080 squared and then take the square root of that, you get 2202 and some change. So we're doing it 2203. And then all we did here was we took a gradient ramp, ramped it just to the middle of the composition, duplicated it, adjusted one of the endpoints to the end, and then did a linear wipe of 50% to cut out the one part. You probably could just multiply the ramps over each other, but I didn't really think of that last night while I was just screwing around. So you take that, put it in the other matte composition, add a polar coordinates, make sure it's rec to polar, and 100%. Then add this radial blur in. Uh, you can do spin, zoom, whatever. And then, let me turn this off so you guys can see how this is built. This is just a repeated shape, a rectangle, that goes into the center. I'm gonna turn the repeater off real quick. I guess it's more of a square, really, but it just comes into the center. The actual layer itself is rotated as well. So I guess I lied. It does have a little bit of rotation. So it's four keyframes, not two. And the keyframes have the ease and whiz in-out expo uh, expression applied to them. So that's all it does. Repeat that. Then you have everything move in. Rotate. And then to that, you add in a time displacement. Link it up with your time mat and then play around with your time resolution and your max displacement. So you can go a lot longer in between and then that'll blur things together a little bit more as they move. So I'm still looking for a method to actually get some sort of time delay. But until then, I'm gonna keep plugging away and trying to see what I can do with it. All right guys, I am Joe from Workbench. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below and make sure you follow us on workbench.tv for more great tutorials. I'll see you guys next week, bye.